well, this is a game changer. We should have done this in the first place. Now it is awesome. Now, Alison does jewellery workshops for people. So she has a group of five people come in and they get to experience making rings for themselves. It could be stacking rings or it could even be bangles, anything. But after using it for a little while, come to realise that the way we've got the benches laid out it's probably not the best. I admit it. I did screw up. Because people are not able to chat to each other quite as well as they possibly could if they were all facing each other. So the plan is to get this area reorganized and make it that much better. But to do this, I don't really want to spend a massive amount of money on materials. I want to try and reuse what I've got. Now, I want to keep part of this bench for myself. So I'm extending my bench around a little bit into an L shape, as I could do with that extra space. Because I do use this bit when I'm in here and there's no one doing any workshops. So what I'm thinking, this one here is a lot longer than this one. So if I take this whole bench out and I move it here then it's got the length that I need the only problem is it doesn't have the width however if I take this one out and I cut the size down of what I need and put it here the remaining parts of the braces I can use maybe to widen this one to make it a double width and then hopefully the only thing I'll really need to do is buy a big sheet of hardwood ply for the worktop. Fingers crossed. But I think it should be right. Does that make sense? I hope so. But it does in here. I just hope it does there too. Okay, so I've jumped ahead a little bit. I've gone and started clearing all of this off and I forgot to set the camera up because I was too excited to get it done or to get into it. Anyway, everything's all cleared out of the way. I've got one bench, end bench, that's been moved out of the way, hasn't it Bob? Yes, thank you Bobby. And uh, now it's stripping down. However, when I put this in the first time, I didn't intend for it to come back out again. So I'm having a little difficulty getting some of the screws out. They're bedded in and the, I've rounded the heads off. So this is where the multi-tool comes in. Everybody stand back! Okay, first one out, so now I need to get on to this one. Again, I think I'm going to probably have the same problem where I've screwed it into the walls. The, uh, um, the screws, it's gone in so tightly. Um, I'm just probably going to end up rounding them off, so I'll just have to use the multi-tool and cut them off. That's all there is to it. Okay, so behind Bob, I now have the table position there. So this was the one that was against that wall. Now the plan, I think, is now slight change. What I'm going to do is source some more timber and I'm going to make another frame similar to this one, but to fit on the other opposite side and going over the top of that cabinet. So that cabinet will be incorporated. But I think 
building another frame next to this and bolting it together, it'll make the whole table that much more stronger. And then it'll be also, so we're picking up the timber, we will get a full size sheet of hard, uh, hardboard ply as the work top. And then it'll be shelving, this shelf and some more shelving underneath. Now the one that I took out originally from that place, that one there, I'm going to strip that one down and that one will go in the corner here and it will extend my bench around. So I just need to shorten the length of that one. But once this table is done, it will be an ideal nice large table for when Alison does her jewellery workshops that everyone can feel as one group and they'll be able to have a good chat between themselves, a laugh and a joke whilst they're doing the jewellery, enjoying themselves. And then we've still got the lower bench on the end, this one being for anybody in a wheelchair or anyone else. So yeah, get in there. What do you reckon, Bob? Are we getting there? You don't really care, do you? Okay, so plan is, as I said, I need to strip this one down, reduce the length of it, and this will become my L-shaped table. So the first thing I need to do is I need to get all of this paneling off. That should be quite easy because it's only it's only tacked on. I'm pretty sure I can get this. need is that's what I need. Perfect. That's what I need. So that's all the nails out, cleaned off on there, also on the tongue and groove boards, denailed all of those so they're stacked out of the way. Not sure what I'll be using, probably not on this anyway. So now all I need to do is get the measurements that I want um, and mark it all off and then I can start stripping. But this, basically this end will then come across over this way and then we'll be removing all of this and I'll keep the lower shelf. Yeah, should be fine. Okay, so we're back from B&Q. Got the timber that we need to get this uh, project finished. I said it in my last video that I put out about that I don't like buying store wood because it's, it's just not good. I went and chose and I picked out the best pieces that I could find and they're still warped. So let's look at this. So these are all buttered up together. You can see this one here, this is warped. Look at that end one. Well, that's terrible. Terrible. Look at that. It's ridiculous. So B&Q, take note. You obviously don't store your wood properly and it ends up warping. So we're going to get these ones measured out to the sizes that I need. So 
So a simple structure, it will just be an A-frame sort of style. So this will be the bottom section and then the top. And I will fix this together by use of the pocket hole jig. Now the pocket hole jig, so I use this Craig pocket hole jig and it is, it is awesome. I think it's probably one of my favorite tools. It's just so simple to use. A Craig clamp as well, but it has been so, so useful. And if you want to put something up quickly together, I recommend one of these. They're not too expensive either. So it's very simple to use as well. So on here, it has markers and then a little arrow for your sizing. So these pieces that I'm using, they are 38 mil. So literally just squeeze it in until you get to the 38 marked off. I don't know how well you can see that on the camera, but get both sides to 38 mil. So then I know when this goes on the end and is clamped on, when I do the pocket holes, that it's going to come out central on the end. So this then clips into there. And then I can clip it onto the bench. And then it's nice and solid. In fact, I haven't got that quite on the end there. I need to make sure I line it up. There you go. It's nice and lined up. And then you also get your drill bit. Now, on this, actually in the case, it's got markers in the case as well. So I can put, put this in so it's fitted in. And then I can put this to 38 mil, which it's already set at anyway. So really good bit of kit. And then simply put the drill bit in. And it's as simple as that. And then I have my pocket holes. Do the same again on the other side. Easy. And then I've got my pocket holes that I can fix it to. So I'll just sand these down, clean them up a little bit, clean up the edges of the wood, and we'll get it fitted. I've squared it up, made sure that it's squared on there, and I've clamped it just to keep it in place. And then I'm going to screw it together. And just remember this channel, and I know I've said it before, this channel is a, is a how I do it channel and not how to do it channel, but it works. First one. So that's gonna be the end, one of the end pieces for the new bench. Simple, solid. Just got to make one more. And this is where my microphone decided to stop working, but uh, the frame is built there. See, this one is the one that fits over the top of the cabinet. But I'm happy with that. It's looking good.
sort of jumped the gun again a bit. I've, I keep forgetting to put the camera on record. Anyway, this is what it looks like so far. So that is the bench in position. I've still got to, I've still got a bit of work. It's not fixed down on the top yet. What I need to do is I need to sand the edges of the ply um, because you can see there's little splinter bits. Don't want them getting anybody getting splinters. Splinter. <sighs> and then I'm going to, for this bit here, I'm going to curve it around so it's not overhanging this bench too much on the corner. But that is going to be a nice big workbench. Well, I've only gone and done it again. Yes, I forgot to hit record again. So let me show you what I've done. So here is the corner. Yes, I've already cut it out. Wow. I've cut it out and I've sanded it. So now if I step over Bob out of the way, so now it just doesn't overhang the bench, lower bench, quite so much. And as always, I've got my Bob with me. Always with me, aren't you, Bobber? Hey. Okay, so now I've got that large workbench in. The next job to do is to do my small workbench to uh, where it's going to be the L shape. Uh, so, as you remember, I stripped the other one down, so I've got the two end pieces. So now I just need to make the, the braces and get the pocket hole uh, jig set back up again and so they get those pre-drilled. Okay, so I've got those pieces cut to size, done the pocket hole jigs. Now it's just a case of screwing it together and open and praying it all comes together how I want it. A nice solid bench. You now once it's uh, fixed in next to the old one, ideal. So hopefully it will fit and it will go underneath there because I had it underneath there before. I know it's a bit of a squeeze because of the carpet. But that's where it's going to go. So then I just got to work, do the worktop and then do the folding table. See, I've got, at the moment, look at this, I'll show you. So at the moment, I have dogs everywhere, <laughs> jumping up, the reason being, what time is it, Bob? What do you want, Bobby? What do you want? What do you want? <coughs> so that's Bobby telling me that he's hungry and he wants some food. And then, <coughs> yes, we've got, we've got the grandpa <coughs> back again. Little Bo, I know Bob, we'll do it now, Bobby, we'll do it now. And there you have it. Cut down one of the sheets to fit on top and just rounded the edge off. I used the, uh, the one which already had the hole for the cables to go through. So just got the lower shelf to do and get that one secured in place. So, and then I need to still think about how I want to do the fold down table whether i want it to come off from the the bench or whether i want it to come off from the wall we'll see i'll figure that one out but yeah happy days happy with that and like i said happy with that one it's looking good okay i am very happy with what i managed to get done yesterday getting this frame built and the the table top or the worktop on and getting the the small l-shaped one for my work area almost ready as now so today what i need to do is 
from underneath. I need to screw these worktops in place so they're nice and secure because as I said yesterday, I don't want to have the screws going in from the top. I want them from the underside. So I've moved this uh, cabinet out so I can get to it. A lot of you eagle-eyed people may have noticed that this cabinet was originally on the other side. Now, I realized it was silly. I use this cabinet for a lot of my lamp building equipment and where I store things. Why have it over there? and have to walk all the way around the table to get to anything. So I've swapped the bases around. This is now in a more sensible place in my sort of work area. Um, it'll, it'll just make things a lot easier. Just, yeah. Why didn't I think of that before? Anyway, glad I caught it. So this one is going to be here. So I need to get, get cracking and get these all screwed in. So that's all of the worktops now secured, screwed in from on the underside. Um, so they're, they're good and solid now. And then I've also given it a coating just to protect the work surfaces. And I've also redone that one just to uh, give that extra protection. So now I've just got to wait eight to 10 hours for it to dry. And then we can start uh, laying everything out exactly how Alison wants it. Eight hours later it is 20 past seven in the evening and this is now dry which means we can get on to getting everything laid out exactly where Alison wants it but really really chuffed a bit with this Alison is chuffed a bit more to the point brownie points for me I just pass them to you, then you can decide yep. where you want them. That's amazing. Cool. That looks so good. Nice. What a difference. From what we first had, this is an absolute game changer. It is far better to what we had. Now, when people come to do Ali's workshops, they'll have a better experience where they can all be around one big table. Everything all nicely set up, laid out. Love it. Most importantly, Ali loves it. And even my side now, for me, my work area is far better. Everything is nicely laid out in its place. I've got the cabinet on this side, which was so much better to have it here. So yeah, all round, job well done didn't really take that long to do and it wasn't really overly expensive I think we spent sort of on materials probably around about 75 pounds so not horrendous I'm happy Ali's happy if you are in the Edinburgh area or within commuting distance of Edinburgh and you fancy trying your hand at making some silver jewelry or bangles then I will drop the link in below to Ali's website where you will go directly to the workshop page and you can book yourself onto a course. They generally take about three or four hours and it's a lot of fun. Plus you get coffee and cake. Bonus. Well, that wraps this one up. 
thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe, hit that like button and ding that bell. And I shall see you on the next one. Thank you.